Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. it's time for a pretty big Unity release, Unity 22.2 is out right now. This is important for mainly two reasons. First of all, it contains tons of awesome additions and improvements which I'm going to cover in a bit, and being version 0.2 means that this is the last big release until the LTS version. So this is the version and feature set that you will probably spend most of your time over the next year. For me this is especially important because I'm currently working on my Steam game, Total World Liberation, go ahead and add it to your wishlist if you haven't already. Since the game is only launching next year, I'm building it in Unity 2022, so this new version is one step closer to the LTS version that I will be using at launch. Unity sponsored this video to do an overview of all of the new features and changes coming out in this version, so let's first look at the new features and changes that they highlighted in their main page, and then I also went through the entire huge changelog so I will talk about my own highlights from that list. There's a bunch of new interesting things that do not appear on that main page. There's quite a lot of stuff, everything from graphics, multiplayer, UI, iteration speed, 2D, physics, lighting, platforms, and tons more. So starting from the official highlights, the very first, very exciting, very important thing is that Dots is now finally officially supported. It has graduated from experimental into preview, which means it is now an officially supported Unity feature. This gets it one step closer to the final production ready release, which will happen in the 22 LTS version. With that, the most important thing is that Dots now in version 1.0, the syntax is mostly fixed, meaning that while it's not necessarily yet time for you to use it in projects that are out right now, it is already stable enough for you to start learning the syntax so you can add it to your own games when they come out next year. For example, that's exactly what I'm doing with my own game. I'm learning the syntax right now, so whenever I come across any performance issues as I develop the game, I will remember that I have this awesome Dots tool in my toolbox to help me solve any performance issues. So that's the big news, if you want to learn the syntax I made a super detailed video on it. Alongside NT's 1.0 comes a new graphics package, also the dots physics, and even a new dots netcode. I haven't looked into this one myself, but it's intended to be super performant, highly scalable, so where netcode for game objects is meant for smaller scale games, dots netcode is meant to handle anything you can think of. I definitely would like to link into it at least briefly before the final production ready release. And beyond those new releases, the other two parts of Dots, the Burst Compiler and the Job System, have also continued getting updates, so this is definitely the most exciting new addition to Unity. Personally, I'm a big believer in Dots, and I can't wait until it's finally production ready to see all of the awesome games that will be built that could not have been built without Dots. The next highlighted section is on multiplayer. A while ago they launched Netcode for Game Objects, so after years of Unity not having any official multiplayer solution since they deprecated Unit, they finally have an official networking stack. I made a really detailed tutorial on it, it's a really awesome toolset, it's very capable and very easy to use. One of the best things about it is how Unity also has a whole ton of tools under their Unity Gaming Services brand, and all of those tools they work together to make multiplayer games really easy to build. You have Netcode for Game Objects for handling your multiplayer logic, for joining players together you have Lobby, for connecting them easily through firewalls you have Relay, which by the way I've been working on two really detailed tutorials on these two tools, so stay tuned for that, those videos should be out soon. And then the new updates is now Game Server Hosting, which by the way is what used to be called Multiplayer, this one is their dedicated server tool. This one alongside Matchmaker, which is a tool for defining rules to match your players with one another, both those tools are now in self-serve meaning you don't need to manually contact Unity to start using them, just go through the dashboard, click a button and start using it right away. All of these tools can be used independently, but they obviously have SDKs that make them super easy to work with one another. So for example, like I mentioned a while ago, netcode for entities, you could use that in conjunction with Lobby and Relay. Or another example, you could use netcode for game objects with Lobby and game server hosting. So if you want to make multiple games, then Unity has a really awesome, very complete toolset. Then the section on graphics, for me, I mostly use basic graphics with URP, but even still, there's some awesome stuff here. The new Shadograph full screen master node is really nice. Previously, if you wanted to use Shadograph to make full screen effects, it required some very nasty hacks, so it's really nice to have a proper way now. And thanks to that new node, you also have custom post processing, so you can create your own effects and add them to any volume component. There's also LOD crossfade, so instead of your LODs just snapping in a very drastic manner, now it's a nice invisible fade. And with forward plus rendering, you now have the ability to support many more lights. For AGRP, you have tons of awesome new features. There's a new water system, you have cloud layers and volumetric clouds, and you even have the extremely high definition eye shader from the enemies demo. So building a super high fidelity game with AGRP just gets easier and easier. Next up, in terms of productivity improvements, there's updates to the terrain tools. 
there is a new AI navigation package, although this is actually a package that has existed for quite a while, but it was only available on their GitHub and not officially supported, whereas now it is officially supported and will show up on the package manager. It has some more useful components for handling navigation and basically upgrades how NavMesh used to work, so now there's no more baking process. You just assign the NavMesh service component and it automatically generates the NavMesh. The new spline package is also now part of the engine. There are some improvements to 2D lights and debugging. Editor support for sprite atlas generation, which I believe means you can now manually generate a sprite atlas without having to make a build. Then some more miscellaneous script compilation time improvements. And also a bunch of upgrades to prefabs. Specifically they added the ability to replace prefabs, as well as a bunch more things to do with overrides. So all in all, a nice bunch of additions. Then another pretty important update to the engine is with regards to UI Toolkit, which is now the official recommended tool for making editor windows and tools. All of the regular Unity property drawers are now being drawn using UI Toolkit, which makes them easier to integrate within your own editors. In terms of runtime UI, it is possible to use UI Toolkit, but for that, so far, the recommendation is still using Unity UI. I believe the plan is for next year UI Toolkit to reach parity with Unity UI, so that you finally have just one tool that does every type of UI. Personally, I've already done a bunch of research on UI Toolkit, although I really haven't made a dedicated video just yet. It's an interesting tool. It's definitely great if you're working in teams, since it forces you to split things between the logic, structure, and visuals. And being forced to do that leads to some better, more organized code. I also know that I hated working with IM GUI every time I used it, so I'm very happy to replace that with UI Toolkit for editor tools. There's also a vector drawing API. Looks very good if you want to draw some weird shapes in your UI and also some more options for tree view controls, including performance improvements. Then the section on platform integration. Android is having a fast deploy setting, making builds faster and easier iteration. The X12 is now the recommended API for Windows and Xbox. I remember in the Unite keynote, they mentioned how it was faster in pretty much every scenario. It's always great to get some bonus free performance just for taking a checkbox. Then ray tracing is now supported on Xbox X and S and the PS5 and Switch now also have incremental builds. So some nice improvements, mostly helping you iterate faster. Then the section on mixed reality, as usual, some more platforms. Pretty much the day the Quest Pro came out, Unity already had support. PSVR 2 isn't even out yet and it's already supported. And the XR Interaction Toolkit is also getting a big update. This is a toolset for helping you easily implement all kinds of common interactions in your XR games. Things like picking up objects, pushing buttons, using levers, grabbing weapons, and so on. XR is definitely a topic that I'd love to cover. I wish I could find the time to dive deep into all these tools. So based on these highlights, there's quite a lot of things in this latest tech release, both big and small. Now I went through the entire changelog, and here's the entries that stuck out to me. First one, which is small but extremely useful, is on the package manager, you can now bulk install packages. So you no longer need to do it one by one, select them all and install them all. For me, this was especially useful because when working on my Steam game, I recently picked up the Asset Inventory, which is an excellent tool for quickly searching inside all the assets you own, but for that to work, it needs to download the asset at least once. Doing it one by one would have been a pain since I have hundreds of assets, so this tiny little addition really helped me a ton. The package manager itself also changed quite a bit. There's now some tabs showing all the data nicely organized. Everything was reorganized, both on the official packages as well as in the assets or packages. Then physics got some nice additions. You can now apparently specify contact layers on a per object basis. Up until now, the only control you had over collisions was on the collision matrix, which works on a per layer basis. But now you can do it on a per object basis. So this gives you much more control over all of your physics objects. Then URP got some decal layers. So you can apply some decals, kind of like blood spatter, but make it affect only the ground and not your character. They added foveated rendering support. I think this one is related to them adding PSVR 2 support, which I believe has foveated rendering, and I think the Quest Pro does as well. This one is going to be a great feature, especially for VR and AR in the future. As usual, there are some more performance improvements when entering and exiting play mode. The Unity Web Request class got a much needed upgrade. Previously, it only supported sending forms. You couldn't send regular JSON without using some tricks. When I was researching the cloud, I needed to send some JSON and it was quite a headache to figure out how to make it work. Thankfully, now this class is nicely standardized, so if you want to send some JSON, you no longer need to search for it, just like I did. The VFX graph got some activation boolean ports. I haven't used VFX graph in ages, but being able to easily enable or disable blocks sounds really useful. 
Bloom also got some nice options for tweaking performance, so you don't need to only either enable or disable. If you're making mobile games for low-end devices, maybe you can leave it on and just lower the quality. Also, many of the tools change to use the new overlay system. These are some UI gizmos that give you many more options based on whatever objects you have selected. They are very customizable, you can place them anywhere, scale and rotate them. One fun one about physics is you can now run some queries asynchronously in a job. So if you have lots of physics queries, this can really help performance. A nice small one is how they set the minimum sprite preview size to 64 by 64. So this one should be helpful when trying to see some tiny images. And there's a bunch more changes, the entire change log is massive. So as you can see, it's a pretty big release with lots of things, both big and small. With this being version 0.2 means that this will be very close in terms of features to the 22 LTS version, which is what you will mostly be using over the next 12 to 18 months. If you, like me, are also working on a game meant for launch in the next year, then check out this version. And of course, stay tuned for dots. I can't believe the final release is just a few months away. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.